then she had that experience with that wall. I just thought that was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of evidence. Yeah, well, and she's right. There is a, there is a confusion as to who's the dream master. Shall we start early? I'll leave it up to Barbara. Well, I'd say we're ready. We're ready. I'm ready. We're not ready to skip, no. Skip? Oh, wait. Oh, no. No. <laughs> what is this? All right, look here. Judy. Tell me what's worth looking at in book five and six, and I'll take a few minutes on it before we skip it. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, yeah. right. All we need is a bunch of quotes. Diotomies uh, met his friend, and they just didn't fight. Is there any clear division between five and six? Because my texts, they blur together, and therefore it was only in the 18th century when two guys from Brooklyn decided to break up the texts and chapters. So originally, the whole thing was jumbled together. Well, the, God, the gods yeah. thought, the gods, yeah. the gods were very involved in book five, but they, they weren't in book six. famous because of his philosophy of so what. And linguistically, if you look at Zofa in Chinese calligraphy, it's so what upside down or something like it. Well, they, in, in book five, you see a lot of human spirit and not just the blood, guts, and gore, as you see in uh, book five, book six, I mean. In book six, you see a lot of human spirit between each other, like, as mentioned, uh, Diotomies and uh, Alexandra. I think, or I'm not sure who so you want, you need to it is. Glauco, You need to say something about it. So well, it looks like... What is significant about it? Rather than well, on their well, with there's 
there was there's a mindfulness among the men on their own without the fighting of war of, of the war that is not guided by the gods. So the men in themselves seem to be able to work well in the war as well as between themselves. Okay. That's why I think but, we can skip it. Driven by the gods, their anger and their revenge, so their need to win okay. as much more than the men. They're driving the men to for their purpose. Chapter so, six, so a kind of conversational style, and really. I can't conclude though, so I, I just That's why see I'm these. Pushing it well, I, I I see that I see that these these differences, but I don't know what the conclusion is. Oh, okay. So keep the gods out. So let's dump this for a moment and get out of this stuff. Um, you know, I'm kind of bored with Homer anyhow, so mm -hmm. shift gears for a moment. Um, um, any of you guys um, study history? Oh, yeah. you, you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Are there other wars in history besides this one? There's a few, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's rather curious. Um, can you pick one that you uh, uh, have? World War II. Which one? World? What's that again? World War II. World War II. Uh, what was the cause of it? Germans were huh? German aggression. Okay. <laughs> uh, sir, was that an answer? Mm, In the sense that, yeah. of course, anything, anytime anyone says anything after a question is an answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you familiar with the same subject? Some uh, what, what was the cause of it? I, I don't know. Get help. Don't, you don't have to have all the answers. <laughs> Look who you're sitting next to. I don't think it's a. Uh, it's one that's readily known. The tr the true cause of World War II. I don't think most people know what it is. I think it's here. The true cause. I'm asking the wrong person. I guess. Uh, help out, please. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles. What? W wasn't it the Treaty of Versailles that caused the. Uh, 
World War One caused World War Two. World War One. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the cause of World War One and Two, if they're interrelated? All right, I'll buy it. Look here. I'm, I'm, Because I have a friend of mine who studied the war of 1870, and he said that's the one that really caused World War I. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so where's, where's that? Where's, yeah, we can use him. Look here, I'm not talking to the right group of people. I really should talk to people who've studied history more than just once or twice in their academic years. Uh, Miss, have you ever studied history? Uh, I haven't really studied it. I mean, did you take classes in it? Well, I've heard people talk about this. The hell with people. Oh. Have you ever taken classes yeah. in history? Good. How many years have you taken classes in history? <laughs> Not long. I well, then you're a, if you put that much time in the piano, how would you be playing? Not very much or well. But, um... No. When did you start studying history in school? Oh, when I was like seven or eight. Is it possible that every year of your schooling they had a class on history? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Thank you. If you put all of that time in learning a guitar, mm -hmm. I guess you might end up playing. Definitely. A little bit, or a lot of it, or half a bit. You'd be good. Well, then, with all that background, would you mind? Uh, did you study the World War One and Two, or something like that? I I've heard people talk who have ah, studied. people. Oh, you're out. <laughs> they said yeah, it look, was. Look. Brian, help us out. I've I've taken classes, but I haven't studied. How would I have a college? Oh, wow, well, that's good. Good, mm -hmm. Brian. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, I don't know. Brad passed the bar. I have been in Utah. No, no. I I don't know history See, yeah, at all. Next to you. See, Philip, it's not like the old days. <laughs> well, in the old days, people had answers. They don't have them anymore. You should know the answer. Of what's the cause of World War II? I mean, you were val valiantly. Pardon, the we are not asking who stumbled along in the war. <laughs> we want to know about the causes. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Let me ask you another one, okay? Can you predict the next one and with whom it will be? China. I can. Hmm? You can. Israel, Iran. China, Russia? China, United States. Well, How possible is that? Come on. Very. Very. It's a moment away. Hey, next question. Yes. No, I was just going to give the World War II question a shot. All right. right. I would say that the cause of World War II were these incompatible ideas behind the governments of the day. Democracy, fascism, and communism. Tell me, why are people fighting over ideas? Okay. Okay, I just wonder. It's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> See, Julie has a theory. And she said, for the last 150 years, there never has been any calamity in history that was not predicted before it occurred, including the sandy havoc on the East Coast. It's all been predicted. And you guys also have a fairly good idea of when the next conflict is going to take place. Sunday. Yes. What does that mean? Come on, what does that mean? Well, I'll give your question about why people fight about ideas. I'll give that one a shot, too. I would say that people fight over ideas because they have beliefs that are false about what is good and what is bad. 
You see, but just because people believe in their ideas, does that mean they then go ahead and go to war collectively? Everybody agrees we should go to war? No, something else. More emotions involved, mm -hmm. fear. Okay, mm -hmm. I just thought I'd ask. It's not a very important question. But. Well, I heard that it was FDR who who saw that if he de if we declared war, we could our country could make a lot of money. So that's. I'm why glad you turned it into a buck. That was going to be my goal. Yeah. So that's. But that's not the cause of the war. Yeah, the war had no. already gone on before we got involved. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right. The Brit Britain was already fighting. So, next Ooh. curious question. Is it possible? Germany. Is this possible? Yes or no? Is it, is it possible that each of the gods in the Iliad has a particular set of characteristics that can be identified as certain specific kinds of forces? Well, then look here. Yeah. I wonder how many, each one of these now, Each one of these represents one, the, the, all of those qualities. Is it possible that there is uh, some kinship between these characteristics? Sure. And are they likely then to join together in certain ways and others less likely? Mm -hmm. Oh. So, um, are there certain, oh, I had the wrong name here, <laughs> how foolish it may. Uh, <laughs> each of the uh, <laughs> major players in Troy and among the Achaeans, does each one of the leaders have a set of characteristics that can be identified? Oh, then each one of the Menelaus, Agamemnon, Hector, Paris, etc., each one of these has a particular <coughs> set. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, among those sets of characteristics, this dude called Homer is going to try to, to tell you how you can make sense of what may be 165,000 Achaeans from all over that region. We know the two regions. We put it in our map, right? The battle between east and west along the lines of the Aegean Sea. No TV, no writing, no public relations, right? Are able to manage an invasion with a, those many people. Hey, an invasion, you know what an invasion is? That means you're not marching across, you got to got all kinds of skills and supplies and everything else, right? A backup. Agree? Mm -hmm. It's a massive undertaking. Would you agree he has to represent certain people here who can pull that off? 
into two camps. Is it possible then that some of these together may be on one side of these men and some on the other? Is it equally possible that there is an interaction now, watch on, an interaction between some of these on both sides? One, two, three. Is that right? And then you can also talk about just the men alone, can you not? Four. And over it all, over it all, you have some dude who's saying, the whole thing, the whole thing is acting out the will of Zeus. Is that right? Step three, chapter five. It's not just gods, see? It's particular gods interrelating with men and men with the gods, both. Mm -hmm. What happens to our friend Aphrodite? <laughs> she gets wounded. Right. Yeah. That's an interaction between men and the gods. It's pretty interesting, yeah. You know what he's doing? He's doing something we can't do. We don't do. We don't set out the causes of World War I or II or Iraq. That yes or no, is that true? <laughs> then, hey, how do you get, how do you get 165,000 people to get off their butt and join you? And how does this guy over here say, what are we fighting over this girl for? Let him have him. What do they want? A couple of bucks? Give them half our treasury to stop the war, forget it. Come on, get off, they go back home, everybody live happily ever after. Hey, why do we have to fight wars? Forget we. How, why do they have to fight the war? Do we have to fight wars? Why? By the way, is it possible that any of these guys in the story spot that it's coming from Zeus? How many of these guys on both sides understand the consequences of this war right from the beginning? In other words, are they just dopes that go to war and fight and die? No. No. Does Hector know what might happen to Andromaca? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And to himself. Right. There's no nothing wrong with his saying. Yeah. He even tells her, doesn't he? Yeah, you're a tough luck, kid. Right? Yeah. So therefore, look here. So Hector here has a damn good vision of what's coming on. And she knows it as well. Mm. Hey, by the way, is it likely that many people knew World War I or World War II or Iraq was coming? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do we know one's coming down the turnpike? Mm. 
We're going to let it happen? Why do we let it happen? What's going on? What's, what, what the heck is going on in our world? <laughs> like, must there be wars? Homer's going to try to tell you that. That's what the book is about. It. Why are you generalizing between why that war started for is is to teach is to exalt Achilles and all the message about what Achilles has to go through to get through his blocks to become excellent. Why generalize that and say that applies to every war? It, uh, uh, whether it applies to every war, certainly it, it applies to every war in a certain respect, right? There are always divisions, there are always leaders have certain personality types. We have to see how they manage it through their personality, through their speeches, through their commands. Right? So that, in one sense, all wars are the same. But in this case, it's Zeus's will. But it seems odd to say that every war is Zeus's will, and he keeps repeating his same um, plan. But why keep repeating this, this will? through all these wars. Okay. Um, so there's something peculiar. Mm. <clears throat> so far as I know, these are the first people who ever tried to describe in this kind of depth of war. They're the same people who started history. No one wrote a history before Herodotus through Cetidus. What does that mean? <clears throat> According to Herodotus and Thucydides, especially Thucydides, he said, you know why I'm writing? Because I'll tell you what, what's going on now is so significant, it's going to happen again and again. Which I can see what's going on is archetypal. He's looking, out, he's looking out his window and he's saying, I'll tell you what's going on. It's going to go on again and again and again. It's either true or it's not true. Go ahead, first. You know, I was looking at some notes from a, an Iliad seminar we did back in 95, and you said that when people have a goal, they become a warrior. So I. So this is um, a case of somebody having a goal. Yeah, well. So whatever the cause of, of this war, and it's not the will of Zeus that it's it, the cause of the war is not that Achilles left. It the cause of the war started with Helen. And Alexandrius. So whatever the cause of this war, the judgment of Paris would probably be is what we go back to the call of the war before the Zeus the Zeus Achilles thing that happens in the very late in the war, the ninth year. So that wouldn't be the that would be what he's doing with the situation in the war. But the cause of the war would I think we go back to the judgment of Paris, and that would be that whole myth with the apple of discord. And So I don't know if the will of Zeus is being played out in terms of the cause of the war. Yeah, okay, you can say that that was the cause of the war. It's okay. What are you making it? Yeah, what, no, no. What do you think that's I'm good. saying? That's good. I think that's right. What do you think I'm saying? I thought you said that Helen was the cause of the war. Well, they've been playing out the cause for nine years. Yeah, so when yeah. does Zeus come in? 
the will of Zeus seems to come in. Let me check. The the Look here. Is there a difference between an, an incident that starts a war? Is that the same thing as the cause of the war? Right. Yeah, something else going on. Yeah. The incident that starts it was how? Sure. Yeah. But what's so, going on with these people? Why do they do that? <clears throat> the question is, what, you know, what are you going to call a cause? Mm-hmm. Paris is poor taste. Yeah. And God says, yeah, according, that would be the greatest <laughs> thought I could find in there. <laughs> so then it goes back, the Zeus's will then goes back to the cause, which is what the boy is. So I just we just uh, wondered about that. <clears throat> Is it possible that some of the people in uh, Akans uh, had an idea what caused the war? Got a quote? No. I need one. Yeah, I was hoping you had one. <laughs>
uh, she, the, 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 uh, the task before us is uh, is she uh, putting forth an idea that uh, the key moves or battles you should focus on to see this interrelationship? Is that how we're doing? Like the first nine years is gone. Nine years? Mm -hmm. Just dealing with what? Certain consequences, certain things, curious things. So, like here. Okay. Is it possible that, yes or no, that in certain battles, certain sides are effective in combat more than others, regardless of the position and the uh, number of troops? I mean, is it possible that somehow a group of a group of soldiers or whoever they are? get together and can exhibit a certain kind of power or courage to overcome overwhelming odds? Yes. How do you understand that? Uh, it seems to be a combination of the excellence of the people involved and the intervention of the gods. But they didn't have it all the time. The, the Just gods? at certain battles they showed that excellence. Yes. yes. So how do you account for that? Um, I would think they need a special kind of unity. They need to function in a uh, unified way in order to be effective to achieve any kind of excellence. Okay, let me put another one. Okay. For what kinds of things in a war do you want an explanation? Like, if there are these critical battles, and they were won by less, less, whatever you want to call it, fewer numbers, less well armed. Is that something you want to understand? If, if the lesser beat the greater? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like what kinds of things? Time. What kinds of things in the war do you want to understand? Apart from the whole. Why you're, why, why, why you're fighting. Maybe why are you fighting? Each soldier needs to know why they're doing what they're doing. And would you agree their inspiration or courage, whatever you want to call it, goes up and down? Sure. Yeah. On both sides? Mm -hmm. Is that worth accounting for? No, 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 the hell with it. Is that, look at, is that worth wondering about? Sure. Like, if we could just take that war, the Trojan War, and map out the amount of time he gives to certain kinds of events in the war, well, that would tell us something about the combat, would it not? Like, does it make any difference in World War I when they called a truce in the middle of that terrible war? 
and the two sides dropped their guns and they walked across the battlefield, that they were killing one another at a tremendous rate and shook hands and had a beer and coffee and talked to one another and shook hands. I don't that story. That happened. Hmm. That yeah. happened. I think you were for it. <laughs> well, it happened. It did. Did it happen in Troy? Yes. Yeah. Then in the middle of a terrible combat, the two sides can say, well, how you doing? Hey, that was a great battle you fought. Yeah. Right? Shake hands and now. Then they go back and kill one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when they kill each other, they oftentimes they, they give their whole background and you know all about their family and their heritage and right. their accomplishments. Right, don't they? And, it's not just yeah. some dumb yeah. soldier being killed. Yeah. Right, there's a whole history. Hmm. Not a number, but. Uh, That, that great war and peace of uh, Tolstoy, right? When Kachuzov is asked, hey, uh, here we are, we're going to fight the French again. Uh, you know, we don't have very secure uh, fortified positions. He said, doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference. We had great positions before and lost. <laughs> We had weak ones and want. Don't worry about it. It's going to play itself out. He says, war is going to be determined only by one factor, he says. When the soldiers decide to stop here, go no further, no more retreating, and fight. He says, you got to wait for that. It may take a year, it may take a while. But in the meantime, we're just fighting and killing one another off. And I'm just, I'm just slaughter, slaughter. Until it matters, he says, that's Kuchuzov. He says, until it matters, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, same problem here, yeah, like what? what? Homer's going to try to say, hey, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at each other. I'll, I'll show you. He says, when these two men get together, the best of them, hey, the best of them, and they fight to a stalemate, what do they do? Yeah, they they part as friends, share, share yeah, share gifts, and share gifts with one another, recognize how great each one of them is. <laughs> what happened? That can't be Tony, can it? Behind all that is Stoney, hi. Is that my right? <laughs> it's not a bicycle you're riding. No. All right. <laughs> so look. Then why do they find you? Oh, I'm trying to show you. You mean that the gods and goddesses are driving them? Pardon? You mean to say that the gods and goddesses are driving them to do it? Is that what they think? No, that's how Homer is depicting it. Oh, hey, did some of these guys in the battle say, oh, I know the cause of it, Aphrodite? Do they say that? For certain they blame them. A, I can get you a line if you need it. Yeah. yeah, I see it. Yeah, but they get it wrong sometimes too, right? Like, like sometimes, like, or they, or they speak wrongly of it. They think they think so and so is being helped by a god, and he's not, or they think so and so is helping the god, is helping them, and the god's really not. Mm. Mm. So. See, what we're getting to is 
you're getting an insight into the people who fought the war, right? And they can have truces in the middle of it. And they can be friends, and they go back to the source. And they're still lined up with these forces. Right? These are rather curious folks, isn't it? So we're going to take a look at uh, how they face defeat, how they face victory. All of the ups and downs. Okay, let's get in chapter five. Give me a number. So I'm just turn it open at random, at book five. Seven thirteen. What page? Seven, uh, what line number? 713. The number? Line 713. 713? Yeah. 713. Okay. <clears throat> Would you read it, please? Okay. A little above that. Now, as the goddess Hera of the white arms perceived how the Argives were perishing in a strong encounter, immediately she spoke to Pallas Athena, Athena her winged words. For shame now, Atritone, daughter of Zeus of the Aegis. Nothing then meant the word we promised to Menelaus to go home after sacking the strong walled city of Ilion. If we are to let a curse to be so come then, let us rather think of our own stark courage. Okay. Would you agree, going back to our model, what are we saying? There's a crisis, right? There's a crisis in the battle. Fine. It looks like it's over. And a couple of these gods then get together and they're going to scheme to bring about some condition that will save the war. Is that right? Okay, who are they? Hera and Athena. Right? What do they represent? Remember the work we've been doing? What do they represent? And let's follow it. Okay, let's follow it. fighting men that Hector slew and Ares, to Tharos first, Orestes, breaker of horses, a spear thrower, Trichos, and Aetolian, Onomachos, Helenos, Poinopides, Orespios, whose, whose plated breast band Littered. In the past, he lived in the Hyle, you know, on Lake um, uh, Capistos. Yeah, he was fond of his wealth, and amid his countrymen, uh, 
had a nice fertile plain out there in Boethia. Seeing those archives perish in the fight. And Hera and Athena now indignant. And now they got a plan on something. The war is nearly to a close. We'll put our minds, right? we'll put our minds on our own fighting power. Notice the way it spills out now. Right? Great eyed Athena listened and agreed. And Hera, oldest daughter of old Kronos, harnessed her team with all golden fringes. Happy fitted upon her chariot, left and right, the brazen wheels with the eight shin spoons and spokes. Right? Dashed off. Right? Take a look at that description. Description of the chariot. And Hera, in her hunger for strife of battle and the cries of war, backed her sure-footed horses in the traces. Hey, for Athena. She cast off and dropped her great brocade robe, her handiwork, and lapping folds across her father's dorsal, taking his shirt, the shirt of Zeus, cloud master, with breast armor and deer of grievous war. She hung the storm cloud shield and traveled tassels, ominous from her shoulder, all around upon it a garland. Rout was figured. Enmity, force, chase, that chills the blood. Concentrated on the guardian's head, Replium, something feared, a portent of Storm King. What does she do? She's going to go to the boss. Right? Words coming to a close. Hey, Father Zeus, are you not thoroughly sick of Ares? Ares is on the Trojan side and he's racking up the brave. All those brutal acts of his. How great, how brave the body of the Achaeans he destroyed so wantonly. It has made me grieve. Father, you cannot tell you be annoyed if I chastise and chase him from the field. Zeus, who gathers clouds, puffed on his pipe and sipped on his beer. Mm -hmm and said, go after him, Athena. Hope of soldiers is the one to match with him. She has a wondrous way of bringing him to grief. At his permission, Hera <laughs> charged the head. I She glided in a straight line like quivering doves, approached the battle to defend the Argives. Hey, but once arrived where their best spearmen fought at the flank of Diomedes, giving ground like lions or boars, ah, 
Oh boy, they were in a hell of a mess. Hera took her stand without a loud cry. Shame, shame, archives, cowards, good on parade. While Prince Achilles roamed the field, of tro the Trojans would never show their faces in a, in a sortie. Respecting his great spear so much, but now they can fight far from the city near the sheep, the ships. This shout put anger into them. Athena, from her part, hastened to Diomedes. Look at the state of mind. Diotomies, he sees it. Right, pr proud Diotomies. I know you, goddess, daughter of Zeus who bears the storm cloud. With all respect, I can explain and will. No fear is in me, no weariness. I simply bear in mind our own commands. You did expressively say I should not face the blissful gods in fight. That is, unless uh, Aphrodite came in. One might feel free to wound her anyway. <laughs> So I'll tell you what, so you command, and therefore I'm giving ground myself, and ordering all the uh, archives to re retire, retreat, shoulder to shoulder, because I know the master of battle over there is Ares. It's why I can see their state of mind. It's Ares. So Athena, great-eyed Athena, she says, I got news for you, Diomedes. No matter what I, no matter what I said, you're excused from him. You must not shrink from Ares or any other god. Well, I'm with you. Come on, whip up your team. Let's go. Right, what's she doing? She's getting them to do the impossible. Yeah. Right? Like, this is, this it's is a retreat. He recognizes hey. these guys and they got Aries and he can't deal with it and she's saying, no, you can't. You got me, I'm more powerful. She's saying forget about what I said. <laughs> she's saying forget about what I said. You're excused. Now it's time to fight you. See, isn't the thing that the troops are all retreating and for some crazy reason they turn around and they're successful. How the hell do you account for it? It happens. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I don't, why did it go? Well, why? Homer's saying, I've got news for you. There's something beyond influencing men in battle and wars. And you better figure that out because that's a possible way to explain this. Since he chose Athena, doesn't that indicate that he thinks the influence of wisdom turned them around? In influence order? of wisdom? Yeah, since he chose Athena as the, the divine force to turn them around. Do you then read? She, yes, that's true, but there's something weak about Athena. She doesn't have sufficient wisdom to 
to find a way to end the war, or even bring about the, the avoidance of the war altogether. Not interested. It's very limited, but it's enough to handle a particular battle. She had Harry's number, and she got later too. That's what he has to explain, right there, see? The war's all over, they're retreating, hell pal, they're all running away, and now suddenly they turn around. He says, I can explain that by going to some higher force or power to try to explain that transition. Okay. The mind of Athena, oh, pretty hot girl. And Hera, with all of her duplicity, wow, look at the two forces that are coming together. <laughs> something, something is going to take place with those two. Book five. Yeah, same one. Where it says, or where Hera says to Athena, um, nothing then meant the word we promised to Menelaus to go home after sacking the strong walled city of Ilium. Um, there's another quote that we could add to that, but from this, I conclude that it is Hera and Athena who, who first promised this to Menelaus to conquer Troy. And so they are, this promise of theirs is the cause. They're, they're driven to fulfill that. And your point would be that Athena, I presume, follows Hera? Right. That, right? Go ahead. Right. And they're, they're working together, and it's their promise that is the cause for gathering all these Greeks together and invading Troy. I'm not following where you're going, so keep going. Well, I'm addressing that issue of what's the cause, what is the cause of the uh, Trojan War? I'm very glad you asked. And I'm, I'm concluding from this small little two-liner. See, if we can take one section, this one, and ask all our questions in respect to that episode, maybe we'll get somewhere. That's what you're suggesting. I liked it. <laughs> so go ahead. Well, so I, at the top I would put Hera and Athena, their state of mind as the cause for promising and allows that he will, he will conquer. And, and then the whole drama follows from that. What's the cause of their state of mind? Would that be interesting to look at? If right. their state of mind just happened, or is there a reason for the type of right. I don't have that. Okay. Do you? Maybe. Where? 
Two. Let me. For two gods to come together to help, what did they have to do? And the episode you're talking about. They had to agree. They had to agree that they should side with one particular group of people. Would you agree he goes to great care to point out the emotional state of their minds? They have to be aroused. Right? They have to really be angry or grieved. Right. They have to be terribly upset right. in order to confront Zeus. Right? right? They're stuck. Right, so we want to know under what conditions then do these lesser gods and at what circumstances they get together, plot together to go to Zeus to see whether he'll okay a plan to enter into this terrible scene here and reverse the circumstance. Yeah, well they feel <coughs> injustice. That one wasn't, isn't it? the case that they felt injustice in being not selected the top, uh, or prior to beauty. Okay. Where do you see the appeal to justice? Do you hear, do you see anything about justice taking place? Uh, no, not in this sense. Not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they persuade Jews? Oh. They say, Notice how fast he responded. And well, is it, Father Zeus, are you not angry with Ares for his violent acts? And they do mention justice, or at least in this translation. And meanwhile, Cypris and Apollo of the Silver Bow take their ease and their pleasure, having let loose this maniac who knows nothing of justice. Okay, look. Would you agree Ares is successful in bringing about this combat, the event? Correct. Right. So they have to get, get together to oppose him. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can do that, as they see it, is first check with Zeus. Yes. So whatever these powers are, that, that is insufficient to reverse the battlefield conditions. There's something higher that has to agree to some direct action by these two against Ares. There's a battle now in the heavens. Right. To decide a battle on earth. Yes. So whatever forces, higher forces, are operating in a particular battle, right? And they appear to be quite successful. How do they how do they reverse it and turn the turn the tables? He's saying, I got news for you. I think I can tell you. There has to be appeal to some higher force, and these things, <laughs> they recognize their failure. They can't help unless they can go ahead together against him with his approval. Oh, then they need, from the highest, the approval to engage one of their fellow gods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what's going on? Yes, that is. Oh. If that's the case, then look, that quote, a great quote. Mm -hmm. right. What's his suggestion? I'll tell you what. 
I'll let you free Athena, let her, she's a smart bride. <laughs> right? She is. I'll free her to let her act. Oh! Oh! Hmm. Now we have to see what she's able to do. She said, go for it. In other words, it was okay mm -hmm. to release her against whatever form of restraint was against her ability to do that. She needed to hire her okay. Ah, hire power. Daimonte says, I know you, Athena. But I tell you what, I know Ares is more powerful than you. I can see it in the troops. Take a look at them. Is that what he said? He says to Daimonte, yeah, you're right. I got news for you. When I'm with you, we can overcome any power. Yeah. Any immoral. Mm -hmm. He was underrating her. And including Zeus? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and doesn't exclude him. See, we have to get back to the struggle that's going on because we uh, have to see it as a struggle because now Aries is you're now going to make an appeal to Zeus. This is in book six, I have a book about it, right? This one. Yeah, in the five years. Yeah, you got it? Mm -hmm. Right? Say Zeus, come on. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> you see nothing, do nothing to check this girl.
I'll tell you what, why don't we get a couple of people to act out this one? <laughs> that would be fun. Right? Really, you need to see it acted out. Uh, Got it around 8.50 or thereabout. Come on, want to see it? See, look, whatever they represent, uh, look at the way he's describing their battle. There it is. She's got the right to do it. How does she do it? And then we want Zeus's response to it, don't we? She makes herself invisible. See, you have to, we have to, in order to understand this, you see, all of the all of the qualities of errors. Right? You have to keep in mind all the qualities of Athena, right? Their powers, their powers. And he carefully describes the powers and what's weak about them since they're not complete. Hmm. See, look. I'll skip the Di Diomedes. But Athena, making herself invisible to Ares, put on the helm of the lord of undergloom. Then Ares saw Diomedes' world and left Periphas lying where he fell straight onward, for Diomedes lunged the ruffian god when they arrived in range of one another, Ares, breasting his adversary's horses, rifled his spear over the yoke and reins with murderous aim. Athena, great-eyed goddess, with one hand caught and deflected it and sent it bounding harmless from the car. Now Dionymus put his weight behind his own bronze headed spear, Pallas Athena rammed it at Ares' belted waist so hard she put a gash in his fair flesh and pulled the spearhead out again. Mm -hmm. Then brazen Ares howled to heaven, terrible to hear as roaring from 10,000 men in battle when long battalions clash. A pang of fear ran through his heart and through the hearts of Trojans and Achaeans, deafened by the insatiable Ares' roar. Ares looked at Di Diomedes as he rose heavenward amid the clouds. He came to see Lord Zeus having coffee and he showed him his bleeding wound. Hey, Father Zeus, how do you take this insubordination? What frightful things we bear from, from one another doing good turns to men. And I must say we hold it against you. You conceived a daughter with no prudence, a destroyer given to violence. 
We other gods obey you as submissive as you please, while she goes unreproved. Never a word. A gesture of correction comes from you. Only begetter of the insolent child. She's the one who urged Dionysus on his mad attempts on the immortals. First he closed with the Kripus, cut her palm, and now he hurled himself against me like a fury. It was my speed that got me off, or I should still be there in pain among the dead, the foul dead, or undone by further strokes of cutting bronze. Zeus regarded him with a frown and said, hey kid, what do you come whining here, you two-faced idiot? Most hateful to me, you're a brute of all the Olympians. Combat and brawling, that's your element. This beastly incorrigible truculence comes from your mother, Hera, whom, let me tell you, I have to, whom uh, I want to tell you, uh, whom I keep but uh, barely in my power, say what I will. You come to grief, I think, at her command. So, I will not have you suffer long. I'll, I'll, I'll get your first aid. I'll send you over to Payon. He'll attend to it. You'll be okay after a short while. What's his point? That the leading, that the leading warrior Leading this battle, right? Guarded by the god Ares. She did him in, right? Knocked him out of the picture. He screamed and hollered. That's all they needed. Get rid of that great fighter, the key man. Right? That's all they needed. Right. That's why you can understand that one. Once they see the key man and whatever appeared to be on his side, he's out. They quit. They lost their nerve. But in this case, there was no key man. Sure. But in this case, there was no key man. It was Ares himself who was fighting. Yeah, but wait a minute. No, no. He wasn't possessing anyone. Yeah, but, but what is Ares' connection with the Diomedes? Well, Diomedes is fighting Ares. That's right. Yeah, Diomedes is bad. But I thought he meant that there was a key Trojan whom Ares was helping, and when that key Trojan was killed, then they got pushed back. But it's it's more like this whole state okay. of mind was there. Okay, would you agree? Uh, there's a battle really between these two, right? And they and she's successfully able to knock out Ares, who was supporting the major figure in the battle. Who is that? I thought I thought it's just Ares and Diomedes fighting. There's no tro major Trojan figure in that. Well, Let's see. look, um, it's just over together. Um, Diomedes is the, uh, the, the warrior that Athena is going to then use to do away with Ares. Right. Right. Essentially. Right. And when that is gone, they, that, that's all that has to take place at this point. Right. It's over. So it's, isn't it like he knocked Diomedes and Athena knocked out their spirit, the Trojan spirit, the Ares spirit? Well, we have an X part though, okay? Uh, and now we move in book six. Right, but let's stay in book five. Um,
the, the, is not the assumption here that there is on the Trojan side that they're victorious. Right. So they got rid of Aries. Well, and if he represents all of those qualities for them, that's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is, we were trying to see whether it's possible to use this kind of an episode and talk about a cause. Right. For just this segment, what would you say? Well, for that segment, <coughs> Aries is the cause of their fighting spirit. Yeah, of the Trojans. And successful. And successful. To the point where they're winning the war. Right. But on the, the Greek side, it's more complicated because there's a certain lower level of goddesses who desire a positive result, but they have to go through a higher one <coughs> For them to get the um, release to actually somehow you know, to free, to free, yeah, okay. free that state of mind, mm -hmm. to free Athena to do something she couldn't do without the agreement. Right. Yeah. See, that Homer doesn't get into that. At least in this, he doesn't get into the dynamic between why Athena. Well. Um, there is no statement to that regard, but would you not agree that if Athena could have done that without the okay, then that episode is not essential? Yeah, that, that episode shows it's under Zeus as well. Yeah. Right. Now, we have to, what we need is to see now the battlefield. But right now that we know that that's taken place. Uh, between the men. Right, 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 right. But just in terms of this episode, would you not agree, it looks like this is the commanding cause. Yes, clearly. Yeah. Both sides, both the winning and losing sides, go to Zeus. Yeah. Yeah. But it's without Zeus revealing that he is the commander. That he has a, that he has a position. Yeah, right. <coughs> they, all, they, they, none of them, none of the gods know what he's up to. Right. The the story. They, they, you always fight with them. Now, would you agree? The reason he gives, what appears to be the reason, to Athena and Hera, is he doesn't. Uh, he thinks Ares is a spoiled brat <laughs> and uh, pugnacious and always willing to fight for no good reason. And, right? He says, go ahead, he needs to be put in his place. <laughs> and that disguises his attempt, his, his design. And, uh, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. What we're looking at now is looking at the forces at work right? when there's a situation that needs to be explained that they have to go to a higher force to allow one of them to act fundamentally, not as a gift, but allow them to intercede in a certain way. and therefore to overcome the power of brute strength. Mm. Curious. Mm. Power of brute strength? Well, Ares, what does he represent yeah. according to Zeus? Right, right, right. He's supposed to fight. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You take a break. What time is it? Anyone got it? Twenty after eleven. Eleven twenty. Oh yeah. Good.
Eleven twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got a bike out there? New motor. Hey, if anybody wants to give me a money for the seminar, I'll take it. Ah. Um, or, or partial or delay. Nothing to check for that, sir. Oh.